All right, welcome collectors to another live stream with uh, four collectors, four collectors. I am John, the 3D 80s kid, the host for tonight. And we are going to be talking about the Strongsville Vintage Card Show that just wrapped up. And uh, like many of you out there, I was not able to attend. So I am eager to hear all about it from folks that did. And uh, I'm going to be bringing on some guests to start. And for this show, it's not going to be a formal thing. So I'm even going to throw a link out there to the chat or with anybody else that attended that wants to share some of their stuff and th thoughts on the show. Welcome to join in as well. So let's get this thing started. Welcome to Four Collectors. All right, my first guest to start things off, uh, straight from California, Mr. Greg of Midlife Cards. Welcome, Greg. Nice oh, hat. Okay. Hey, when 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 you're in Strongsville, you come home with swag. Chris from Missouri swag right there. <laughs> so got the here, I'll turn around just just so everybody can see. It's the the official Chris from Missouri hat Chris. there. I gotta I gotta go backwards. It's the only way to wear it. I'm like Samuel right. L. Jackson. <laughs> cool. And up next, out of the Northeast, we've got John Wade Boggs fan. Welcome. Hello, I'm sporting the swag as well. <laughs> of course, you've got to. You know, you've got it. Flaunt it. So <laughs> I like how Greg's the vice mayor of Strongsville. So. <laughs> Unofficial well, title, I believe. Unofficial but, uh, title, yep. It's like the assistant to the mayor of Strongsville. Yes. Yes. All right. I we were supposed to have the mayor himself, but we hear he is still in transit back to Missouri. So unfortunately, he is not available at this time. Hopefully, he can join in later. But for now, uh, excellent substitute from our very own four collectors, Sammy Thunder. Welcome aboard. Hello, hello. This is quite the hat fest that's going on right now. <laughs> it makes me of, jealous. I, I feel silly. I, I can. I wonder, I wonder which one didn't make Strongsville. Um, <laughs> oh, so. now you're rubbing it in. <laughs> All right. So, so just to kick things off, I mean, I, I've started watching the videos. I mean, what? What was first the first impression of everybody uh, walking in the door of this event? Uh, you know, starting with uh, John, what, what what did you think uh, coming into this show here? Well, this was my first Strongsville uh, show. And when we got there, uh, before the show even started, Chris showed me the room in the hotel where it had been in previous years. I can't imagine what a it, tiny it closet. Like. It, yeah. was, it was such a small space. And I don't think they added many new dealers this year. And so to cram that many dealers into that small space, I heard that you were like back to back and walk, trying to walk through the aisles. The space I thought was great. Uh, the fact that 95% of the dealers were vintage, I loved it. Uh, there, was, there were a couple uh, tables that had some, some modern cards uh, and maybe some like uh, 80s cards uh but for the most part if you wanted vintage uh it was there uh, maybe not to the scale of the national of course it, that's such a large show but there were some dealers that i've seen at the national uh some regular dealers i think in the vintage circuit so my initial impressions was i i loved it awesome greg uh, what about you yeah, I mean, the thought that it was in that old room, it literally seems impossible. Um, I mean, it, this, so the, the show is literally in an ice rink, in the rink, and they just, there was no ice. So the boards are still up, the glass is still up, and it was within that. So that gives people an idea of how big it was this time. It's sort of like a high school gym, maybe probably smaller than a high school gym, smaller than, smaller than a high school gym, I think. Yeah. And... I personally was completely blown away with the volume of stuff in that space. Like it was absolutely bananas. And 
I mean, if, if somebody was like maybe a 60s and 70s collector, they'd probably go, yeah, it's cool. But if you're like a 30s, 40s, 50s pre-war, like it is, it's insane. Yeah. And a so, lot of high end, when I say high end, not, not just price point, but grades. I mean, you saw, <clears throat> you know, 60s, 70s, even 50s. You saw sevens and eights um, everywhere. Um, yeah. High end, nice, nice quality vintage. <clears throat> and uh, your thoughts, Sammy? You know, I came in um, kind of uncertain as far as what to expect in terms of um, who was going to be there. I mean, not so much the, the creators, but the dealers. And, um, so there's a lot of like there's a lot there were a lot of familiar dealers uh, familiar dealers that we've encountered in past shows because um, they are nationwide dealers, but uh, there certainly was a lot of um, some local dealers as well, and um, you know there's again as to Greg's point there's a variety and of so much I mean actually one of the one of the highlights was seeing. Um, uh, Tim Payne, Payne Sports Collectible, seeing his table because I haven't seen it outside the national and I've purchased from his website before but never met him in person. So it was, it was really nice to do that. But um, outside of the show itself, I think hanging out with everybody was really the, one of the biggest highlights. Um, just kind of learning about um, learning about the preferences that people have for their collections and uh, just meeting new people and learning more about them personally. So, and there was just a lot of laughs going around. So that, that was, to me, that was the ultimate highlight. So yeah. it was really a lot of fun. Awesome. All right. I'll take a quick moment to say hello to the chat. We've got Keegan from Vintage Goats. Welcome, Andrew. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, welcome. We've got uh, oh, them oh. commenting back and forth. Looks like before it started. Brent Richards is here. Uh, Billy Huffman, welcome. We've got uh, Billy Balgay, welcome. Peter B, a uh, great comment to James Gillum, K cards, <laughs> Peacemaker cards, Dumps, David Sports cards, Doug or Joe Wood collector, Gary Peters, Mookie Chilson. Uh, Scott Shulman, who's that guy? Uh, Ruben Snyder, Brian over Hodges, 1455, Mike Hitman, 23, 65, Full House people. Tonight, John Keating, that 70s card show, the Detroit Collector is here, <clears throat> Don over at Don's Field of Dreams, Doug, DK Cardboard. Rob, the baseball time traveler, a whole bunch of people. Jacob Dahl, peeps. All right. It's Hugo, signs of the past time. Mike, sports history collector. Lou, godlike collectibles. Houston and Sun. All right. There we go. Now I'm caught up. Full All house. right. <laughs> like I said before, if anybody else that went to Strongsville wants to come on and share, you're welcome. Uh, so up next, I was gonna, you know, start asking if anybody was uh, might be willing to share some things they might have brought home besides uh, the awesome hats. I don't know. Who wants I, I'll, to show, I'll show you. I'll show you whatever you want. Uh, uh, so my video, I posted my video about three hours ago uh, on the plane. Sleeping sounded too enjoyable, so I edited for. I took about two and a half hours, edited my video. And uh, so I was pretty much ready to go when uh, I got home. I had to do a couple more things. Uh, but yeah, I, I spent a lot of money. I don't, I'm not a big budget guy. Uh, I don't know how to keep one anymore, I don't think. So um, I don't know. What do you want to see? You want to see one thing, two things? What do you want to see? Whatever you want to show. Okay. Uh, so what I thought was going to be my biggest right. pickup of the day uh, and the, yeah, this is yesterday, I think. I, the, I, it seemed, I think it was just three straight days was one day. So I thought this was going to be my big pickup, and I was super excited because this is a card that has been on my goal list. Uh, when Darren and I made our goals for the year, 
this was a card I really, really wanted. And uh, there were a couple others uh, in the same dealer. And but this one to me was the best one and it was the lowest grade and at the lowest price. And so I was like, well, if we're buying the card, not the grade, I'm absolutely thrilled. It is super clean, super bright. Uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to have that. So that was supposed to be my big card. Uh, and then, you know, I found, and, and that deal was also done with, uh, this T206 hall of fame. Actually, I mean, some people would call this his rookie card. Uh, it's in an old SGC three. So I, that, that was, I did that deal the first 20 minutes of the show yesterday. Uh, no, not yesterday. That wasn't the same day. Uh, Friday. I was searching and hunting, and then I went in to make my move uh, Saturday morning. So I did that. And so that was like in the first, uh, uh, what was that? It was like the first 30 minutes. And then I just was like, cool, I'm good. I don't need to buy anything. And I walked along, and one of like, I would call it a borderline grail card for me, uh, showed up. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I was buying it. Mm. Oh. It was just a matter of how much I was going to pay. And when he gave me the first price, I was like, I would have paid at least $100 <laughs> more than, than you're saying. Wow. And so then it was all negotiating to try to get it uh, as low as I could. So I'd have more money for other stuff. So, you know, I collect Warren Spawn. This is the Warren Spawn card. Mm -hmm. It has incredible color. It is gorgeous. absolutely perfectly centered. It has some wax on the back, which I was, you know, my dad came yeah. over after uh, I got home and I was showing him my stuff. And I'm like, I think I'm going to start collecting cards with, with wax yeah. for a couple of reasons. Number one, it docks it. If there's heavy wax like that, it docks it like a point, point and a half. So, so I get a better card because it just happens to be a wax card. And then number two, I know that it hasn't been soaked and sprayed and buffed and shined. And I'm like, so now I know I got an authentic card that's not going to get decertified or anything. And I'm like, I'm like over the moon over, over, I, I was over the moon about the other two, but then that one, I, I mean, like, like. <laughs> I, mean, I I think it immediately goes to my favorite card in my collection. So, I, and then, so I went from having spent no dollars to over, 50, dollars. well over $1,500 in <laughs> about 40 minutes. I bought nothing. I bought nothing on Friday. And then in the first 40 minutes, I spent. You, know, you didn't beat, but you didn't beat Petty's record, though. Petty, I think, what was Petty's record? Oh, <laughs> Petty. Well, I don't. I'm not going to throw up Petty's numbers and what he's. I don't know what he was. He he got some big stuff in my video. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but in my video, I sit down with him to summarize his first day, and uh, he goes through all the cards that he picked up, and he's like, "I might buy something tomorrow," and then the next day he. <laughs> <laughs> and I videoed the whole thing of him asking to see it come out. So Petty's whole deal for a massive card uh, is on my video too. So check that out if you if you uh, haven't. I got a couple other things, but I'll I'll just stop right there for you know someone else go. All right, who wants to show someone next? Well, I'll I'll go. Um, I I was sort of like. Uh, Greg, in that I, for the most part, I just looked around to see what was there on Friday. I did make two small purchases, but I wanted to get a lay of the land and what was available. Um, and then within the first, I think I may have, have you uh, beat Greg. I think maybe within the first 15 minutes, I went back to, I knew where the, the, the table was and I, I wasn't sure about buying it on Friday. And the more I thought about it since then and into the, the Saturday morning, I was like, yeah, I was going to go for it. And uh, the dealer actually had two cards and I was able to make a, a deal. And of course, right when uh, I was looking at the cards from the dealer, Mike Baseball Collector came up and uh, I was about ready to make an offer. And, and I, I, I told him what I thought would, would be a fair offer from what the dealer initially offered. And Mike was sort of like, yeah, 
yeah, that that's a good deal. I think you should take that and all that stuff. And the dealer said, yeah, sure. So here Mike shows up and he's like, hey, I'm, I'm making deals already. But um, the, <laughs> the, the two main ones at that table, which sort of got me going and spending on my budget, uh, was the uh, 62 Clemente. Mm. And then that's the beautiful. 57, 57 Ted Williams. John, when, when was that? When did you get those? Uh, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Huh? Yeah. Because I remember, you know, I remember we were talking a lot outside and I was wondering because I didn't, I don't remember seeing those. I must have been, uh, it, they were um, on almost on the other side of uh, Ash's table, not in the same row, in the middle row. Um, oh no! What I meant was like at the gathering. I thought. I oh, at the gathering. Yeah. Like, um, I didn't have those. I didn't have those on Friday night. Gotcha. Yeah, I only picked up two those small are, little uh, those cards are uh, Friday night, those and then the big purchase again. I'm I'm all about budget, and some of the guys uh, had a, a laugh at my expense, and it's <laughs> it's all in good fun. Um, I had a certain amount of money, and I was bound and determined to spend it all. And I got down to, it was, oh, maybe five, five o'clock on Saturday. And I had $25 left. So there's this one table that had some bargain sla uh, vintage slabs in, in like some uh, two row boxes. And I went through and I found this one card and I'm like, well, Hey, might as well take, you, you never know until you ask one of those things. So I said, hey, would you take my last $25 for this card? And after the guy thought about it for a little while, he gave in. And I picked this up for 25 bucks. Nice. Oh, <sighs> PSA 5, perfectly centered. <laughs> and normally on like a $40 card, they'll give you 5 bucks off. I mean, you know, but... Yeah, he took 25 bucks. So I spent every single penny. Uh, I'll save some of the other uh, cards for my wrap up. Nothing, you know, the, the Clemente and the Ted Williams were my two big purchases. And uh, yeah, that Matthews is sort of, for me, the highlight of the show because I, I nickel and dime. Every $5 I can save goes toward another card for me. And yep, they, they, took, my, they took my last dollar, but I got a cool card out of it. We got a new person uh, coming in there. All right. So, oh, man. Uh, and, that's the, oh. and, that's, and that's the one who was making fun. No, no, he laughed at at James's joke. Uh, what what happened was I was a, with these bunch of guys, and I said, I got $25, and I need to go spend it. So I started heading off, and uh, James Gillen, who uh, roomed with me, said, as I was walking away, I didn't hear him. He says, just buy some chicken nuggets. And Don started laughing. <laughs> and I just kept walking. I didn't hear him, but yeah, they 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 got a good laugh at my expense. But I got the last laugh with that Eddie Matthews. So, um, so it's kind of it's kind of fitting um, since uh, Don just arrived. I figured I'll show some. I have I have three big pickups. Uh, so I'll show the thing I picked up from Don, which is. Uh, Beautiful looking Al K line 54. Mm. And I will say this when I was looking through Don's pile of cards that he brought with him on Friday, Don knows how to pick his cards. <laughs> so this was a very nice pickup. And um, I appreciate uh, Don uh, selling this card over to me. So I appreciate you buying it. Those were yeah. all the ones that were decertified by PSA, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah Don, Don's a big advocate. Hurt, but we're not going to talk about which. That. Which we we have to we have to talk about this real quick. No, we don't. Kurt was at the show. Oh, Kurt's he... card care. Kurt was at the <laughs> show. He, he was, was there the first day. He was there on Friday, one hundred percent. Yeah. And he and he had a Kurt's card care hat on. Just <laughs> all right. It was a little interesting. I missed. I missed him. Well, he selling right. some cards yeah, too. He looks like. Let me. He was just walk. He was just walking around. Okay. So, just to go back, I'll finish this up. Uh, this one was a really cool piece. This one was in Craig's display case. Um, I've never seen this before. 
it is the 1958 San Francisco Call Bulletin set with Orlando Cepeda. And I didn't even know that Orlando Cepeda had anything outside of his rookie card. Um, so when I saw this sitting in his case, I asked about it and I decided to, uh, you know, go for it and uh, made an offer. And we went a little back and forth for a few. And um, ultimately, I was able to pick this up, has a schedule in the back. And what was really cool is that I learned about a new set. So that's, you know, another another thing to add to the list of cards to a Willie Mays, another Willie Mays card to find. And speaking of Mays, finally, the uh, the Bazooka 1959 Willie Mays. Um, I picked this up from, I think, William, you know, William Chapel, who had quite a display of stuff and had this sitting in his display case. And um, this is, yeah, just to me, it was uh, just a, a great pivot card from the stuff I was, I was trying to look for. And I spent the first 20, 30 minutes scouring over tables. And I was like, all right, time to pivot. And I knew the bazooka was definitely on the radar. And, um, you know, it was just uh, really just a, a beautiful looking card altogether. It has the insignia, the yellow and the blue. And um, I couldn't be happier to have it. So these are the three big pickups for me during the during this show. That Willie Mays is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Happy for you when you got that. In person, looking at that thing, I, I it makes you wonder. I mean, I, how that's a four, I have no idea. Like it is right. gorgeous. It, it looks you. like it was just printed. Seriously, like that mm -hmm. that was a wonder. And I didn't know you bought that K line. But when Don had the pile of stuff and people were going through it from across the room, I saw that Kayla. I was like, that thing looks sweet. And I just kind of like looked over and it caught my eye and I didn't know you bought it. That's cool. Yeah. That's part of the Don collection right there. Oh yeah. Jason bought some oh, stuff. Yeah. Too. Yep. yeah. That's awesome card. Yeah. It is. How about you buy, Scott? I didn't buy any cards from Don because I, I don't trust him. <laughs> yeah. My biggest cards, uh, this is, th these are my two biggest cards, though. First and foremost, I, I got this one autographed by uh, Theo and Sammy. As a, as a well, there you go. Theo needs to work on that autograph, though. I'll and be at the National one, to give you an autograph on that and, one. And this one, they won't uh, they won't grade it because it's oversized, so I can't get it. <laughs> So it's it's not a true it's not a true T two hundred six size. So great, I I didn't get one of those. I have to get one at the national front. I didn't need it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I just I wasn't thinking about it, and I don't know. Yeah, I, or send me your address. Email me your address. I'll mail you one. Okay. I just showed my pickups on, an, on another channel, so <laughs> I got smaller stuff I can show. Otherwise, this is like the third time my cards have been on YouTube already. So. <laughs> I do have some stuff grading, and Sammy, I had an absolute brain malfunction this morning. I, we went, all to, did. I went to go grade with you. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't submit my T206 at Walsh. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, you, I you can do, you'll be able to do it again in July. So. Right, right. Or I'm, I might just send it. I, but I, I wasn't even thinking straight. I'm, I'm thinking of six or seven cards I wanted to pick out, and that, I'm like, why the heck did I grade this? So, yeah, that's fine. And I was a little tired anyway, so. It's been a long day. Yeah, yeah. I did get some smaller stuff. Some um, uh, I can show what I got from Brian. I didn't show any of that too much, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to determine. I got uh, I got that from Brian at the meet and greet. So 54 Sherm Lawler, uh, 64 Killebrew, 69 Our Pops card, Billy Stargell. And then a Dick Buckus. And he gave me a good deal on these. Those were awesome cards. Just sitting there having fun, buying cards. Yep. That was good times. <laughs> I didn't realize how short Sammy is. <laughs> I know that was that was quite the surprise. I'm not used to being second uh, second tallest. <laughs> <laughs> I had heard Don was tall. I just didn't know he was that tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's quite strange. Yeah, that, that is something, though. I will say that when I first started seeing everyone, I've uh, people's height. You're just like, but like you're like, oh, okay, you know, like, like uh, I just there were some surprises for sure. 
But yeah, I think if cool. I would have been there one more day, I would have gotten a neck strain from looking up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't well, have Dylan and Jake there to help you out. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I did get a uh, quite a unique item Friday night, and it was a gift from Dave Blue Jacket sixty six. Um, he found two. He'd never seen them before. I'd never seen them before. Um, cons stickers that would were put on the top of the packaging and we're looking at him he says you 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 collect gas right and i'm like yeah I, I you know did his run and stuff like that and they they weren't that expensive but he gave me one and it's it's a i don't know if you can I don't know if you can get the screen on here yaz kilbasa power cons and the the the, back, the white backing there is just an insert to, because it's it's so thin, but it's the actual uh, unused sticker and it has Yaz on it. I I can't tell what year it is. Uh, I may have to reach out to to Dave to see if he found out what year this is from. The the one that he kept was a much larger one, and I think it may have been for a hot dog, but this is for a kielbasa. I just thought that was a cool piece and can't believe that Dave. Gave me one of the ones that he picked up, so that was a that was an awesome gift. Very cool. It's going to be the name of my fantasy team, Kilbasa Power. There you go. <laughs> nice. Great name. That's a great name. <laughs> oh, man. I will show just real briefly because um, that. I have a huge stack of inventory now, which <laughs> it's going to make great fun to try to price all these tomorrow. But uh, I figured I'll just show just a few of the highlights from it that I think were worthwhile. Um, I had the help from uh, Brian B. Roth. He was my roommate during this whole thing. And we were up to like two, like at least one thirty, trying to figure out which cards to send in and some didn't i mean some didn't make the cut because i'm over i'm way too critical <laughs> so but like here's an example of a, a really nice looking 59 duke snyder Ooh. um got a nice looking 64 al k line uh roger you know i had the, i my my objective was to get a lot of yankees and mets uh because of being in a new york market but you know looking nice looking roger maris here's some you know um Nice looking uh, second year of uh, Juan Marichal. Sorry for the blurriness, my camera. Uh, a semi thunder budget does not go very far with cameras. <laughs> so, and then finally, finally, I'll just I'll stop here. But the Sandy Koufax, this one was really nice too. So, uh, they will be available at my future shows in Milford, Connecticut, next Sunday, and then following week after that is going to be Fishkill, New York, and Garfield, which was. A place where Mookie Chilson shows his face only. <laughs> That's it. You know, Mookie just made a comment in the chat, and it's it was something that I I, I thought was is worthy of talking about, and I wanted to see what everybody else thought. But I mean, there was an insane amount for me. I was surprised by the amount of uh, ungraded vintage stuff that was in good condition and i kept i kept struggling with understanding like these guys are big time dealers and there's just stacks of like nice ungraded stuff i mean there was so much i'm not used to that i'm used to i go to a show and anything that's decent is graded and there was so much ungraded stuff and i'm like why aren't they grading it and selling it like i know that there's a market there is a market for buying ungraded i get that but it was it was just volumes of it. And I, I was really, really surprised by that. Um, is that how it is at a lot of, you know, East coast and Midwest type shows, or was that more than usual? Like, what is it like for you guys in your area? Cause in my area, you never see that out here. It's pretty common where I'm at in the Midwest. It's actually fairly common. Uh, we have a smaller show, uh, South suburbs of Chicago and, uh, most of the dealers and it's quality ungraded it's not just you know beat up stuff yeah. uh, most of the dealers are ungraded as a far uh, as opposed to graded um and then we have our quarterly shows the monster you know the midwest monster 
I mean, sports spectaculars, there's a ton of ungraded stuff at those shows as well. Hmm. Yeah, I did notice that there was there was a good number of of ungraded tables solely ungraded. And of course, I you know I I uh, already graded, but um, I got to think too. Some of those guys have so much raw. The amount of money it would cost them to get them graded. I, you know, I just don't know if it's worth their time and, and the wait time and effort to do it. Yeah. And I think they're just old school and they're just not going to. A lot it. of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of that down. A lot of the old school guys who still frown upon grading. Mm -hmm. And then from a dealer perspective, it, it almost has to be the card needs to be worth grading. Right. I mean, the, 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 the numbers have to make sense in order to grade it. Um, you know, some of the stuff that I was even showing that, that I got from Brian, like, I'll grade it because I collect and I like that stuff. But you know, how many people like how many people are going to grade here? I got this from the same dealer. Sammy got some of his inventory. Who's how many people are going to grade this? I am because I, I want to and I want it in my collection. But you know, you don't see a lot of this. At least I don't see a lot of this graded at the shows I go to. This is all typically raw stuff. You know, unless it's a maze, unless it's an Aaron or a Clemente or something of that nature. Mantle. This stuff is raw typically. Yeah, that's um, going to uh, setting up at shows and going to a lot of shows in the greater New York area. Um, I see a little bit of the best of both in terms of dealers. Like the Fishco show, there is a, a dealer who sells nothing but raw. At the Garfield show, and I think Mookie will, would know who I'm referring to, there's a dealer who is probably around the same age as the Fishco guy, and um, he sells nothing but graded. This guy named Ron and sells nothing but graded SGC primarily. So it's, uh, you know, it's just everybody has their preference. Um, you know, some people like to try to maximize what they can get for a card as a dealer. And, um, you know, some people just have a knack for being able to grade stuff and know how it's going to grade and what they can get for it. And some people just don't want to be bothered with it and rather just sell the card raw and see if they can make a little bit on it from the initial investment. And, you know, just kind of go with that. So it's a little bit of the best of both worlds here, at least in the East Coast for shows that I've seen. Now, I, I heard that that some of the prices, at least maybe not at every table, but some of the tables for ungraded cards, they were almost asking graded prices for. Like it, it was if if you thought it was maybe a, a four or something like that, you were they, they were asking full, like if it was already graded a four. Um, is that common for, for dealers selling ungraded to, to price their cards as if it was already graded? Or maybe was that a unique table? I think that's pretty common. Okay. I, I agree. I see, I see that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a little maybe out of whack. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it's not graded. You can't really ask for a graded price because there's no guarantee that, the, you know, you may think it's a four, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, I thought some yeah. of the tables were at the show were, were significantly higher than, you know, some of the stuff was worth. A lot of them, yeah. not all of them, uh, uh, but uh, quite a few, quite a few. I was looking at pricing, going, "Geez, what's so much? What is this? It must be some magic gold." I was looking <laughs> at, uh, yeah, I was looking at a card at one of the tables. It wasn't a high price card, but it was thirty percent above the highest, the highest recent comp. And even if he, you know, I did, you know, twenty percent off his price, I would be paying over the recent comp, and I, I just what I, I don't think I even stopped bothered asking like, what his yeah. best offer was because I knew he wasn't going to go down right. that much, and I didn't want to pay. I mean, it was a nice looking car, but I, I didn't feel like I wanted to pay at the absolute high end for that card. And that would have meant him even like giving a really good consideration. So I, I didn't, I didn't I used to say I didn't buy anything from his table. But I, so I was just there trying to pedal my silly t-shirts and everybody kept looking on their phone for comps. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, like we have score. an arrival. The mayor has arrived. He probably just got home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't been here long. <clears throat> you probably didn't even have time to say hi to your wife. Uh, she didn't want to say hi. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like all the hats people are uh, wearing there, Chris? They look really, really good with that. I mean, 
I mean, class that's up a little bit. John Wade Boggs fan just looks like he's a tourist over in France right now. <laughs> and, and I said I didn't feel like I was really missing out until I saw that you were giving away those hats. And I thought I was you, special. And Chris was my roommate, and he gave me one. I was like, wow, yeah, this made for me. And then I go downstairs, and there's 10 other guys wearing them. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> So, I walk in with this hat on. I had it floored. My wife hates these kind of hats on me. She's like, what the hell is on your head? I'm like, I like it. Chris, well, I just what, want to say uh, thank you for organizing that gathering. I didn't get a chance to thank you personally for that. Yes, um, yes sir. For thank arranging you, you. everything. Uh, you're true, uh, a trooper for uh, arranging all that. So thank you. Well, uh, my wife did a lot of it, so you know. But you, I thought, Henry. to me, I mean, I I don't know what you guys been making fun of each other or or you know hugging each other or what. But for me, that that with the exception of eating that pizza, <laughs> <laughs> best part is I was eating it with you at one in the morning. <laughs> that was. That was my buddy. That was my buddy uh, uh, that I rode up with. He was he was eating that like it was the best damn pizza he ever had in his life. But yeah, I went to grab two pieces. He grabbed about nine. I said, "My goodness." <laughs> yeah. My Mike, baseball collector, sat down real quick at the table and he said, "Man, this is a wonderful, wonderful event. That pizza sucks." <laughs> <laughs> Well, how many you put tubers actually made it overall? Uh, was there a total count? Well, it was too hard to get a total a total count. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm gonna get with Darren and a couple people that kind of tried to pay a little bit of attention to that. But it was it was it was pushing forty. The it was pushing forty if you count today, and probably over forty. I, I bet you it was close to fifty, including not not just content creators, but those who. Who follow? I, I think right. I John, there were a lot of guys there that comment on our videos. But I tell me. you what, though, I tell mm -hmm. you what, on any YouTube gatherings that we have, and I hope they're watching here. But anybody that are residents of West Virginia cannot attend. Um, <laughs> I met I met four I met four guys from West Virginia, and man, they were they were a blast. They were two of the last people to leave, um, but they were they were having the the beer had a good flow to it and uh they left and they were talking in cursive when they left <laughs> if there truly were 50 people we were forgetting that it was really 51 because i was really there too <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys just didn't see me but i was there <laughs> well you spent you spent half the time up in your shower washing cards <laughs> you know, man, i I couldn't face up to Kurt. I had the opportunity of a lifetime, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh. Did, did anybody know of any? So have we talked about the hotel yet? Oh, the elevator no. can only go into the fifth floor for anyone. Which, which yeah. elevator? <laughs> which elevator when it was working when? The only, the only one that was working was the left one. The right one was not working the entire time we were there. So in, in spirit, Mike Canadian Cards was there because the year before he had more trouble with the elevators than we did this time. <laughs> but oh, oh, man. what was with that? Like for anyone that had to stay on the sixth floor, that was that must have been a struggle. Like take the elevator to the fifth floor, then have to find the stairwell to go up to one more floor. I didn't even know there was a sixth floor. <laughs> There's not. Yeah. Well. There was one elevator that went all the way up, but it was out of order for a while. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I know Darren and Mike Petty were on the sixth floor, so they would go up five, and then they do the <laughs> stairs for the last. I was on five, and I took the stairs. I well, a Saturday morning, someone was someone was stuck. Stuck. Yeah. Even from Canada. The alarm, and then I heard him yelling. And so I went to the front desk and said, hey, there's someone stuck in your elevator right now. So you know, I, was, I was at nine in the morning on Saturday or eight thirty in the morning. I think I think Don heard this. But my friend Brent, who rode up with me, was at the card show and he was talking to somebody. And he, you know, what do you do for a living? Brent asked this guy. And he says, I inspect and refer, uh, inspect and repair elevators. And Brent said, I got a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, John and I, what was it? Yeah, like last night we were walking around because both like both ele- both up and down buttons were pressed. <laughs> yeah. But when you walked by the elevator, if they were both lit up, you knew it was out of order. Take the steps. So we were trying to find where the stairs were. And it took us a little bit to figure it out. But man, oh man, that hotel was a trip. <laughs> the shower, the shower was a nightmare too. Like I felt like every time I pulled on that thing, it was just gonna come off. Like right. that was not secure. And then finding the hot water spot, yep. finding the off spot. Yeah, I went from ice cold to scalding hot, and then yeah. it stripped all night. <laughs> yeah, but I will say, ran, and I was like, our, our toilet, our toilet ran and ran and ran, and then leaked onto the floor. Oh, or, well, Chris, that's because of what you did to it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then, uh, then our bathtub, uh, our, our bathtub would leak. We never did get a change of towels. Never did clean our room, which is, which is, I mean, it, whatever we, you know, it's not like we're, it's not like we're that prim and proper, but, but I was down, I was down at the bar talking to Andrew Nuff said cards and there was a, you know, a line of 10, 15 people going to the bar uh, to get a drink. <laughs> the bartender wasn't there. And then Andrew pointed toward the jukebox and the bartender spent like 15 minutes trying to pick out songs while everybody was waiting for a drink. And I just I was shaking my head. And and then when I, when I saw Brent bring that pizza to our table and looked at that, I didn't know, I didn't know what that was. And so the, the amenities at the, at the hotel wasn't that great, but I think that makes a pretty good story. And I, I would imagine every one of us to stay there again next year. The, uh, you guys all just want to stay at my place next year. Yeah, no. I'm game. <laughs> All right, party at Scott's house. But, but the, uh, the the bottles of water and the Gatorade and the snacks were all practically free. <laughs> yeah. well, another guy that I went with, he went down and didn't have the correct change. He and they and they said, "No, we need the correct change." And he says, "Well, all I have is like two dollars." And he had a a couple candy bars, a bag of chips, and the two waters. And they said, "Ah, oh, that's good." So when, <laughs> and then the, the next day, Don knows this. The next time he comes down there, he gets a couple things, and the guy's on the phone uh, at the desk, and he goes, he leans up and he says, "Ah, oh, that's on me. Go ahead, take it." <laughs> oh, that hotel is definitely like. I, I, I was, we were talking to the, the front desk clerk, and she said like she was she was working doubles and saying that people were not showing up. And mm-hmm. I'm like, man, oh man, like Brian. That's not a one-time thing. The elevators didn't work last year either. <laughs> it's like I don't know how this hotel passes code. Well, you guys missed it if you, if you left uh, this morning. They had a they had a psychic fair there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we all yeah. I knew that. Yeah. I knew you. <laughs> I saw Dan in the lobby, and he said, "Ah, psychics! I predict a lot of ladies with gray hair." <laughs> <laughs> we were making jokes about that when we saw the sign because I would say, "Well, do they really need itineraries? Don't they really know what's they going?" They know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should know that schedule. From, you know, no and problem. And <laughs> why would psychics need signs pointing to which way the room was? I, yeah. I was kind of, and then it was just, it was kind of cool also, like when we were, when you go to the show and waiting online, you could see all the hockey games that were going on as well. It was like a, it was a blend of two worlds coming together. I was unaware that Mike Moynihan got on skates. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I didn't didn't know he did that until I saw his video. I can't believe he didn't fall. Oh, yeah. he did he did great. I think there was some editing going on in that video. I'm sure he <laughs> fell down at least once. Yeah, it, he did. It was a green screen and he had two guys <laughs> taking him all the way around. <laughs> yeah, man. If he didn't fall, I can't believe that's his first time ever on skates. Uh, if it is, he was that was that was really good for your first time ever yeah. on skates. He used to he used to partner skate and, you know that kind of stuff. Do the pirouettes and stuff. <laughs> Can also mention the. I mean, I wish Darren was here for this, but Orlando's first video that he did ended with Darren with the uh, with the with the, with the craziest looking smile. Oh, Greg is gonna help, Greg is gonna help provide some context for this, but and I can't do the Darren face when he looks really happy and pleased. But it was like 
<laughs> and Orlando purposely finished. I, I swear to God, Orlando purposely finished that video knowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. There needs to be. It, that looks like. That looks like the country. Aaron must have been in a mood because this is the photo he took with me. Okay. <laughs> is that like his mini O face? I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Did anybody uh just out of curiosity? So when Steven uh bought the the Jackie, did anybody else talk to him right afterwards? Because when he came up to me, he was mm -hmm. like, I I can't believe I just got it. I'm shaking right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't and, and again I, I don't want any, anyone to say, but the I forgot to to find out what he actually paid for it because he told me he told me what they were offering and what he wanted to offer and maybe settle on something. He got um, a pretty good deal. I don't want to say the price. I yeah, mean, I don't want. I don't want to say. Yeah. But, but I, I meant to. I meant to ask you know, him when I saw it what he. He, ended he was up pretty getting. happy with what he got. Good. Yeah. Well, that was the main thing. Yeah, I think he said they met in the middle. Oh, when, good. When they, good, got, good, when good. they, got, when they yeah. got really close, then they 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 came in. The that's middle. that's what he was sort of hoping for. So I'm I'm glad. But he was showing me, and we were looking up the comps, and I said, Stephen, that's a card that you can't go by comps. That you that I said the same everyone thing. overpays because they want the card. And I said, as long as you're happy with the card and what you pay for it, that's all that counts when it comes to that Jackie. And he was he was over the moon with it. Yeah. As, I said the exact same thing, John. He, I, I had talked to him like three times prior yeah. to him buying it. Yeah, you know, and he was strategizing, and yeah, I said that's that's out of my stratosphere. You know, you got to know what you want to pay for it, and if you love it, you get it. Period. Yeah. Well, he's been, you know, with him, he doesn't get a chance to go to that many card shows. So right. it, this has been building up for him. So, I mean, the excitement mm -hmm. must have been. Yeah. And he told, him, like, he told me a month ago he was really planning on that was his target card, and he was really set on really making a run for it and uh, yeah. and, and honestly it, the comps that we yeah the comps that we looked up uh, i think it was a two that he bought um two and a half i think two, yeah, and, two half. and a half his his two and a half was so much better yeah so right. much nicer than than some of the recent comps so i think if anything it, it deserved if you want to look at the comps that deserved paying above that just for that quality of a 2.5 that was an example to me of watching someone else get that big of a card for them and feeling their joy. He is yeah. genuinely just the nicest guy in the world. Oh, yeah. So then, so then when he gets it, I mean, he was over the moon. You could just like see it seeping out of him. He was just thrilled, and, mm -hmm. I, and, and it pumped me up. I'm like, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you can you could feed off of that. I'm like, all right, now let's go spend some money. Well, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> who, who were we talking about? Because uh, I, I have a quick admission uh, to make myself uh, here. Steven with the uh, uh, Steven? Rip, 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 rip Fanny. Fanny. Okay. Steven with the PH. Yes. Yeah, if anybody's wondering why I keep looking at my other screen, I am currently in the middle of the REA auction. And I am starting to shake myself <laughs> because I just went through a 15 minute interval without being outbid for my Lou Gehrig card. Nice. And you won it? No, it's the auction oh, goes no. until nobody bids on anything. Oh, but nobody's oh. bidding on mine. There Which Americas are you looking at? I am going for a. Well, I can share it on the screen real quick. Uh, I guess here. Um, yeah. L so let me we're going to go bid on this. Yeah, right? yeah, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Make, make yeah. sure your credit card information is up too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they do not take credit cards uh, with REA, so I'm good there. But here's what I'm going for. Oh. So, um, look at that handsome face. Look at that. <laughs> you know, some people don't want to pay just because it's got tape on the top and the bottom. But if it didn't have that, I would not be in the running for this. <sighs> so, what is it? John, it's, what's uh, it? listed as a W502. They don't know exactly the distribution origin on the card, but it has a very similar style in the way it was made and lots of picture similarities between those 
and the uh uh the like the Tharps, Sweetman, Harrington's uh Youngling uh cards. So it might have been printed by the same printer. Wait a minute, what did you say, John? Huh? Did you just say Youngling? Yeah. Younglings, whatever. I'm on the West Coast. <laughs> it's not a regional thing for me, uh Don. So sorry. <laughs> It says that card, according to PSA's website, was that they were rumored or assumed to be dispensed within packages of candy or some other similar product, it says. Okay. Right. So, Chris, how long did it take you to get home? Oh, 10 hours and you know, 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I hear you. It took me two. <laughs> <laughs> how are you, Sammy? Were you seven? Yeah, I got back probably an you know, hour and a half ago after dropping Brian off, and he came back home, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped for lunch, so it took me 40 minutes. <laughs> there you go. Rick, uh, you got deep pockets. You can go for the PSA 3 <laughs> that's on Heritage instead. So <laughs> I'll take the authentic with the tape on it. <laughs> Also wanted to kind of acknowledge how generous uh, Shock for, as we know him, as Mike Petty was throughout the entire duration of this weekend. I mean, he's an absolute sweetheart in, you know, just making sure that we were all having a great time and, you know, bought us lunch. Even though he tried to, you know, pay pay for lunches, he was just not, no, no, your money's no good. Get Put your money back in your wallet. <laughs> But no, I just he was uh, that, that mean, might be better than your man genie, actually. No, no, no. That was pretty good, really, yeah. really good. You yeah, just need a few F bombs in there to be yeah. I know I have to keep really it really happy. No, listen, he was I mean, we all get we he was just a great addition to have with, with us and just kept everybody in pie in a in a great mood. And so I mean, if hopefully if he gets to watch this, if he if he hops on, I mean it'd be phenomenal. But I just wanted to acknowledge that. That was the first time I met Mike, and uh, he was so kind and nice to me, and we, we had a nice time chatting, and yeah, great guy. Yeah. He was he was probably the guy I was most surprised with out of out of everybody was Mike, and uh, I, I thought he was a great guy. He was he was fantastic. I was surprised too. I was surprised he didn't get arrested a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, See, I'm texting him. Did. I'm texting him right now. Uh, he, he made some big buys, though, man. He made he he he. I mean, that's a guy that just loves to collect. So, yep. Sammy, Sammy, uh, Don, and and uh, Greg and I and a couple of people talked about it. I believe, and we're gonna maybe try to come up with some numbers to get kind of close. But as you think about it, the YouTube community that showed up this time, and the friends of the YouTube community, maybe maybe purchased more than $500,000 worth of cards. Think about that. Wouldn't you like a group? I'm sure like you this? $10 to that number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wouldn't you, wouldn't you like a group like that to come to your card show or, you know, if you were hosting one and, uh, and not that, and not that anybody's like a real, you know, show off or anything like that. That's just people that's showing that, were people were eager to get cards. People were eager to go to a vintage, uh, vintage show. People were eager to get together. Um, you know, I was talking about like one of those sh show like that, the dealers, the dealers might be, you know, might have higher price, might be overpriced and might not be willing to make deals as much, but I was going to buy a card. I'm not going to travel all the way strong. I'm not going to drive 10 hours and 30 minutes to Strongsville, Ohio just to be disappoint myself and not buy some cards, you know? And, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a blast. I picked up some, I picked up some fun cards, but this YouTube community picked up a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff. I think that was the world's colliding, you know, back to what you were saying, John, if you thought things were overpriced. So if, if the hype was out there and I actually talked to a deal, I talked to Howard that uh, the dealer that Theo knows, uh, this morning, and I just asked him uh, how how he did at the show, and he's like, eh, it wasn't terrible. Um, and I said, oh, really? He's like, yeah, with all the hype, I thought it would have been better. So I was a little surprised, you know, because I thought there was a lot of action in the room. I saw a lot of transactions in the room. 
But I, but, but back to the point, I think it's okay. So these dealers know that's coming. They know what's happening. So then at the end of the day, they don't really need to, they don't need to price it up or knock it down as much. You know, it becomes, it becomes a collision of worlds, educated buyers, educated dealers. All right. Where are we going? This guy drove 14 hours. All right. We'll give him 10% instead of 15 or 20% off. So it seemed that, you know, it seemed a little less for you. You had to work harder to get, to get the card you wanted. I thought. Oh, it was I think so. for me, like, uh, I, I was dealing with a lot of guys, uh, in their, in their value boxes and, uh, you know, I'd go there and I'd, there was one guy I struck up a conversation with for a long time. And he told me that his sales from his value box paid for his table in like <clears throat> six hours. And and here's the thing, though, that he had some really good stuff in there, like this uh, 71K line. You know, really, really nice. I mean, That's sharp. <laughs> I got oh, that was that on the end cap? Was that on the end? Yeah, I got, I got that for $5. Yeah. And, uh, same with this McCovey. Uh, you know, again, stuff in his value box, and he told me that he his fees were paid for, like right away. And, uh, how much was the table? I mean, did anybody ask any any of the dealers how much the tables were for the weekend? We did. Yeah, I did. I I want to. I think the one guy told me he, paid, he had two tables, and his was like fourteen hundred or something. I, I thought I heard that fourteen hundred dollar yeah. price tag. I think it was maybe yeah. based on your location. Where the guy go ahead. Go well. Uh, you, you go ahead. You probably remember better, but there was there was pr prices for the insides and the outside walls were higher priced. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I had a guy that w was spending uh, the fourteen hundred dollars came from when we got there that that morning. Uh, he but he had a lot of tables. So what I believe you tell me if I'm wrong on here, Don. It was like four hundred and forty dollars a table. Right a day at, at least for the inside um rows because that's where that guy was i'm not sure what they were charging for the outside rows but the outside rows were more right what about the penalty box <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing i found uh, brian hodges was on the second day i was looking for an eddie matthews 55 bowman and i mean i scoured the, the first day looking hard and i did not find one but the second day, Hodges pointed after we ate uh, a hot dog together, he pointed out where I found it. It was right in the middle of a guy's display case. <clears throat> so evidently, you know, he must have re he must have restocked as as stuff was sold, you know. And I got this just really, you know, this was probably the one card I was really looking for. And uh, that fifty five Bowman is so nice. I was really really happy to get that. But uh, that's a nice copy. Yeah, it's just really John had really his head nice. turned toward the auction. I saw John was looking at the auction. <laughs> and I know it's like that wood grain across the top is where they're usually kind of miscut at. And uh, so I was really, really happy to get that. That was so Don. So Don. So so I want to continue acting like we made fun of each other all weekend. Like we I wanted to just keep extending. But Craig just said he was eating a hot dog with Brian Hodges. Was that you on one side and him on the other coming together? Like <laughs> coming together, yeah, yeah. The lady, lady in the tramp. Yeah, lady in the tramp. <laughs> lady in the Greg's. tramp with the Yaz kielbasa. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it in your video, Greg, where somebody talked about holding somebody's package? Yeah. Oh, Pet, yeah. Petty, Petty said, I'm holding Darren's package. I, and you know, I was driving just, home. I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to let you know, you, you're going to re-see that clip a few times. So just, <laughs> just, right. just know that that's Then we were on the lobby to go eat dinner. I forget if it was Holy's or Trib's. And Chris and I walked down and asked where everyone was going. And Chris was like, well, you know, that's a gentleman's club. And Brian B. Roth, we're all buying it. Pastor Craig is like, I'm out. I can't <laughs> yeah, Chris is like, we're going to take the pastor to the strip club. Uh, Don and I told him we were there last year. It's great. It has a great brisket sandwich, but it has stripper poles. <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. It was too uh, much. Too much. All right. There's been ask of uh, what did Chris pick up at the show? What didn't he? A bad case of clap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for rooming with Don. Oh boy, there it is. Oh, he got, he got hey, the props from the right. pizza. Yeah, so I picked up. A, I, 
I had a I had a great show. I had a great show. So um, there's I, I'll show a couple cards, but um, there were there's so many stories that I hope I hope each individual YouTuber tells on their on their stuff. I can't I can't wait. I don't want to give it away, but the best story out there is going to come from that for people that did not go to the show, I believe is going to come from Dave blue jacket 66. And I, and, and, and Greg knows what I'm talking about. And Don knows what I'm talking about. And when they, when he shares that, everybody's going to, they're going to just, they're going to just uh, think it's as crazy as me, but here's a, Here's a 1927 York Caramel pie trainer that I picked up. Nice. Mm. And then um, a 1921 Oxford Confection. And this is, I can't even see who it is, guys. <laughs> Make it up yourself. <laughs> I think it's Ruth. Sisler. George Sisler. Sisler. George Sisler. George yeah, and then <laughs> and then the same thing uh, with the Grover Alexander. I he is, Alexander. he is not well re represented in my collection, so I got this and I love it. But my my biggest pickup probably was this Leaf Joe DiMaggio in a three, and it's a beautiful card. Mm -hmm. That's a great card. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Chris, there's uh, I remember you told me the story about the other uh the the pet list, like the pickups you made with the exhibits, the maze and the <laughs> with the red statistic backs. That had me cracking up when you told that story. Uh, what about it? <laughs> no, it's like you made the um you got they got lower than Oh your... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My my best uh, my best uh, story against the dealer, and and I don't want to make it buyers versus dealers at all, but I want I brought a fifty three bought a fifty three mantle to trade for some cars. I brought uh, uh, Carly Stremski, and I and I I had some guys that were going to buy some cards, but that then ended up not wanting to, and so I took those to to kind of trade it up for some cards, but I had, I got out this 57 mantle and an SGC three and the dealer looks at it and looks at the back. And I have like $800 on the back. Cause I set up the shows every once in a while to, you know, every once in a while too. And I said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm looking to buy a trade for a couple thousand dollars at your table. And I want to give you some cash plus trade some cards. And I show him the mantle SGC three and he goes, Oh man, Oh man, I like it, but I wish it was in a PSA. And he says that I, it's it's pretty fluid, but the best I can do for you is give you two hundred and seventy five dollars for this and trade. And I'm with my buddy, and I'm like, I'm like, no, I, I you know, I can't do that. And he said, and he said, oh, what do you what are you thinking? And I said, I, you know, I don't know, but it's a lot more than that. I'd rather you tell me what you're giving me in trade. And he said, uh, well, maybe 300. And I said, no, nah, I can't do that. And I started to walk away. And in his case, a step down, in his case, he had a Mickey Mantle SGC3 uh, for 1000 bucks. <laughs> so I turned, around and I, I turned around and I said, I'll give you 400 for that card. Yeah. And, and he said, oh, I can't do that. I said, well, my SGC3 and a newer holder, yeah. you were going to give me 275 but you won't sell me one for 500. I said, I can't deal with you, man. And I just, just kind of laughed and walked off and I, you know, I understand wow. he was trying to make some money, but you know, so that, man. that was, that was my only gloom and doom story from a dealer. There, there was one guy I was buying some, uh, some 1973 tops. I mean, it's some real basic cards and he had some Reggie Jackson's that were like, okay. And he was he was so out of line with his prices, and I thought, I mean, he was he wanted like forty dollars for a '73 Jackson that was not, you know. And I had pulled out like three cards, and I think they came up to like fifty dollars. He says, uh, "I said, what's the best you can do on him?" He's like, oh, "About forty-six." And I was like, "No thanks." And uh, 
it was just it was there were some people like that but then there were some guys like that were just fantastic like the guy that sold me this uh this here i got 12 of these for 70 dollars, and the orlando's with me when i bought them and uh, nobody knows what they are man Jeannie doesn't know um uh, brian didn't know um stukes didn't know nobody wow. knows exactly what these are yeah um, and, uh, were they all Braves or were they players? Yep, yep they're all Braves. Um, the, the Hank Aaron wasn't there and the uh, Eddie Matthews was, was not there. <clears throat> and uh, they're from 56. They got to be from 56 or 7. And, uh, plain backs, so, Craig? Yep, plain backs, nothing on the back, really thin paper. It's hmm. almost like they were like a rub off or a tattoo. But uh, we, we just don't know for sure what they are. And, uh, See, I figured if Orlando doesn't know, Mangini doesn't know, Stukes doesn't know. Uh, didn't uh, your friend B. Roth, Sammy, send the picture to somebody? I wasn't there when you okay. guys were chatting yeah. about it. It's the first time I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah Mangini was, thought it was some sort of transfer. Yeah, some kind of a transfer, and then, so we just don't know for sure. But, uh, hey, it definitely is a transfer. Never doubt my nuts. Hey, look who's here. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 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 Am I here? The man. Pigeon. Our handsome friend. Can there's you hear the, me? There you the go. Prince, the prince of What's Strongville. Up, my fruitcake friends. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you guys. Boy, it was sure a pleasure meeting everybody. A lot yeah. of fun. Same here, Mike. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. You guys cost me a lot of money. This my wife is actually making me go on right now because she wants a full accounting. She's got the Excel spreadsheet in the other room. I was going over it with her. <laughs> Everything was three dollars. I saw that big thirty dollar card you bought. Wow, thirty bucks, roughy. But I would have been much worse if you guys weren't there. <laughs> you, you actually had people checking you up. Is that is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I'll tell you what. The biggest beating I got was from Don. Field, field, of, field of beatings on that Campanella card. Let's look at that thing I got at home. Boy, that thing. Talk about run over by a truck division. <laughs> look at that. I had to pay. He made me pay all the money. It was worth it, though, just to get to talk to him. I should have charged you three times as much. I forgot. Yeah. I got him in the Hall of Fame now. My prices. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> it was it was definitely a bargain at like a quarter of the price <laughs> but it's a nice it's pretty nice i don't think i've ever seen one you really even see those around i think there's only about 10 of them or something out there in the wild that are at least graded i don't know yeah. more but yeah anyway it was nice but what a what a show i i've never had that kind of fun at any card show or anything that have to do with baseball cards that's for sure i'm sure you guys all feel the same way yeah well it's just so different typically i'm by myself and just like focused and doing yeah you know, now there's tons of side action and fun and lunch and meet, yeah. get together what i really loved is like just walking the aisles and like uh, like being in back of dave and then you know coming up with him and watching what he's he's looking at and asking him questions picking his brain and then darren Yep. And uh, same way with him, because those guys have really tremendous eyes, you know, and uh, for cards. And like, and then I, even, you know, it's like we all helped each other. It was funny, like when Chris was looking for cards, you know, I, I dude, I think you're half blind. I don't know how you even see. You're <laughs> I mean, no wonder you don't text or do anything. You can't see the letters. <laughs> I, you went up to that one. I mean, so like I felt that I was helping you the one time when I ran into you there, that kid Cutter had a, he had a Larry Doby. You go, how much for that Doby? And uh, he said, I don't know, it was like 200 and seven. It was a lot. I don't, it seemed like it. And yeah. that thing had a tape. Half the card was tape on the right side. And I loved the kid. I was like supporting him and saying, man, you're really, this collection you have is amazing. And Ash is like uh, mentoring him, you know. And then I said, Chris, I go, dude, I go, that thing has a strip of tape on the right hand side. Like you can't, and you go, oh, okay. And you gave it back to him. He says, how is that helping me? I go, that's my buddy over there. I go, when he tilts his head to the right like that, he can't see the tape on the right hand side. <laughs> I, I'm not saying my eyesight's that bad, but Mike, I was with Mike and I said, look at the, you like, Ty Cobb, he said, Chris, that's Sid Mishes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that is, Chris, we're looking at 1960 Fleer, and he's like, hey, look for uh, 
Duke Snyder and Mike Moynihan's whispering to me, there is no Duke Snyder in that. <laughs> it. Well, that ex like I said, explains a lot, but we're all at different levels. We could all use the extra help for that everybody uh, gives us, you know. It was just a, just an amazing time meeting everybody. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely coming. I'm going next. I'm going every year. Yeah. Until I quit baseball cards. That's you talk about Mike about people helping out. Like I, I'm not, I'm not the best at like picking out cards, but I was looking at a '52 top so that Warren Spawn. Yeah. And Orlando came with me and looked at it, and he was like, "That was just something not right with it." You know, just something not right yeah. with it. And kind of, he, you know, he he kind of pulled me back from you know probably buying a card that I would have got home and looked at it and been like, oh, "I don't like this." You know, what I mean. So Orlando was like a big help for looking at some different cards. Oh, me too. I mean, there's no doubt. I, I mean, he, 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 he Greg one time I was looking at a '67 Brooks Robinson. I was like, "Look at that!" And he said, "That's a Venezuelan." I was like, "Oh, okay." okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Every, everything I just, I've bought in the last three months, I've run by him. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So yeah, anyway. Garrett was actually working the booth when I helping William out when I bought my T206. He was, so, I, I was over, yeah. I was over there then too. Yeah. With yeah. Him. It was nice to see. He's really like a uh, mentoring. That, that, that guy's a great, great guy. I bought a couple cards from him too. Yeah. He's, he's at a lot of the shows I go to locally in Chicago. Gosh, you're so I lucky. Always from him. I always yeah, he, buy he's a treasure. Yeah. No doubt. He sets up at the Philly show as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's for sure. And you're not going to find his inventory anywhere else. I guess he said either. Because you know he's not like he's posting that or taking pictures or of everything. You're not. Right. You know, the only way you're going to find that is to go see him. Right. So um, you guys are lucky on the uh, East Coast there for sure. And the place wasn't that much of a dump. The area, the hotel room. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like I heard you guys already talking about it. That if my wife was there, she wouldn't have stayed there for one oh, minute. Neither she would have demanded. She would have put her foot down and demanded a nicer place. Yes. But, I mean, I don't know if you got you guys have the same shower problem with the handle almost falling off and the yes. water. <laughs> Mine shut off if you were if you pulled it to the top, it shut off. If you pulled it to the bottom, it shut off. Oh, that's that's the nicest hotel in Cleveland. Come on. <laughs> After you know. the water ran for like 15 minutes, the thought of oh shit, I'm gonna have to take a cold shower here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, but at least there were free snacks in the lobby. You just go up and down. <laughs> I, mean, I, paid, I paid for them all. I always left money. It was the honor system. I heard you guys, but that yeah, that was service there. It was horrible too. It was just it was the honor system. It was my honor to take this for free. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Greg, you he signed up through Expedia and got the got the place half price for well, what the, we did. Well, here's the thing. So I went I went uh to the link through the through the website and it said all the reserve rooms, the block of rooms have been taken. So I was like, all right, I'll see if there's anything on Expedia. So I go on an Expedia and it was it was sixty two dollars. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, cool. So then I uh, I got there and I was like, hey, like, Petty, what'd you pay for your uh, what'd you pay for your room? And he was he was like, uh, I paid like one hundred and twenty five dollars a night or something. I go, dude, next time you use Expedia, it's half off. <laughs> I paid two twenty five for three nights total. Oh, I, oh, see, I paid one hundred twenty five for the three for nights. Two. Hey, I, I, paid got, what, I paid what you paid, Greg. I, I got a like blockbuster story for you that nobody knows about. With Rocket, I just if Chris when he uh, they, they uh, <laughs> Orlando went in there to get his jacket, you know, after lunch, and next thing you know, I see him come back down to the to the desk there, and he asked for another key or what? He he, he uh, got another key, went up. He must have got a jacket. I never saw him leave again. And I was waiting to go to the airport. Rick is in there at the desk. Like just laying into the uh, to the two people there about they 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 were trying to kick him out of the room. They reserved three nights and they said we only have you down for two, and then that's why they locked his door oh, and they wouldn't let him back in. He had all his stuff in there and stuff, and so yeah, I just kind of I didn't want to get involved. I just waited. Oh. I walked outside and waited for my car to come. I so, laid, Rick laid into him. Well, I mean, I would say, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, deservedly, you know, I would right. say no, I just, he was just kind of, I mean, he was rough. I would have probably been worse. But. Yeah. Don, right. Don was walking by the, Don was walking by the desk and he said, this is a five star hotel out of a hundred stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really was. Like I said, it's a best Western plus, plus. But you know, I, I got to, I got to say though, the fact that, we had our rooms downstairs was a bar we could hang out with 
They're, yeah. They're, Chris, Chris got the, the banquet room for that one night. You yeah. walk across the parking lot, like 35 yards, and you're at the front door. Right. It was so convenient. And you go right up that road, and there's all sorts of restaurants. I mean, all right. sorts of stuff. Everything was right there. And it's like, if I have to deal with a loose shower thing and a, a using the stairs... Oh, I get all back. of that. I'm staying at the same place. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just felt like I was in college. It was fantastic. <laughs> right. Well, for us, for a bunch of dopey guys. Right. If you're not going to take your, you're not never going to get away taking your wife there. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It was like camping. I will say this about the bar, though. If it got too busy, you'd be lucky if you got a drink. That was the yeah, problem. Well, that's what Chris said last year. Yeah. That's why we. Yeah, we brought our own. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. pretty neat because, like, Jason, you brought some beers there. Yeah, like, yeah. nice, yeah. Sammy. You brought a nice just of the younglings, yes, yin yangs, yin yangs. Yin yangs. And, uh, <laughs> they didn't say anything like about because I, I thought they were going to have a waitress in there. Yeah. I mean, they're just missing so many <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> they, they're a missing... waitress. Yeah, that, they didn't have anyone to work the front desk. <laughs> right, that bartender was working the front desk, the bar, and serving. I mean, she was all over the. Do you place. realize yeah, we would have hired if they would have hired like two waitresses for us? Yes. They would have right. made, so made a mint. I would have given. Listen. I was going to give them my credit card there. Actually, to be honest with you, listen to I this. Thought, that's what I thought. That they were going to service drinks all night, right? And yeah, then right. you give them a big tip. They would have been happier than shit. Oh, I when I was negotiating, I when I was negotiating for that room, mm -hmm. I told the lady. I said, I have some. I said, I have some concerns. I said last year, I said, I, I went down to the bar. I waited with my buddies at the bar. They, we weren't getting served. I ran up to my room, fixed me a drink, and got back downstairs. Not even her in before they even got a drink. And she said, "We have that taken care of." And she said, "She said, well, we have a bar right there. We're going to have two waitresses right there, not just serving us, but serving that whole area." All right. And she said, "You're going to be." He said, "She said, I promise you're going to be able." It's going to be totally different than it was last year. We could do a couple of other things, you know, like, uh, the, like, I, cause I, frankly, I thought like, uh, like Greg said, I like the idea that everything was right there. You had that room and everything, yeah. but, uh, I mean, what's this, they didn't care if, what, if you brought the beers in there, what's to stop us from like bringing our own bartender in there. We were so we, bringing, bottle, bringing our own booth. They won't let you. Uh, there, there's might there's supposed to be a hundred dollar penalty for us bringing our own booze in there. Yeah, they weren't regulating that. I'm telling you. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's, nope. There was nobody to regulate her. Yeah, but I just said, you know, I when that night, if if I get, you know, if they add a hundred dollars onto my cleanup bill because we brought in our own alcohol, picture this. What's that? Save us a hundred dollars. Two people, two people. maybe they're girls. Yeah. I'm just saying, maybe they're nice. You know, 22, 23 year old girls. They kind of know how to pour drinks. You bring in, you know, like five, six bottles, some beers like you brought in anyway. You pay them a couple hundred dollars a night. You pay a hundred dollars for five, six hundred dollars or whatever you've got. You know, everybody getting drinks and whatever the hell they Eddie. want. They walk up to the bar. I mean, you got, they don't have, they don't, they don't, don't Petty. They don't yeah. have work. They don't have working elevators. <laughs> Bringing in outside waitresses for we special can do events. It. So we far can bring them in. You were just hoping to get clean towels. <laughs> <laughs> I had plenty of towels. I was all by myself. That's why. Yes. Uh, but no, I mean, if you bring it in yourself, I'm well, saying. Right, I think we'll just have to call the event planner at the place next time, and she'll take care of it all. <laughs> she's probably, had, yeah, she's probably booked out six months in advance, right? <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I had no issue with my hotel, with uh, the hotel room. Plenty of towels, no faucets falling off. Yeah, Some my towels, shower was fine, off. toilet was fine. Yeah, but Sammy, you're used to hotels with hourly rates, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and Sammy, come on, that shower head. That got you wet. I mean, dude, you're like seven foot tall. That thing was like spit. My, I could spit more than that thing. I have like, I, I come home, I got fucking shower heads blowing everywhere. I couldn't wait to get home. I think Greg is cracking up because of what you what you originally said and taking it completely out of context. You could clip that. You could clip that two and thirty seconds for hours. You just got gold right there. I had to mute myself. I know, just like that uh, comment I made about you guys like that one about uh, Darren, right? 
Package. Package. Oh, I'm grabbing your, I have your package in my hand. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Seriously, though, did you ever, like that beard? That must have taken you 20 minutes to get that thing wet. <laughs> That's a mom. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, really, I mean, really. Tell everybody how that, how much water pressure that was. We had a ton. Yeah, I don't know, man. You just got a crappy hotel room. I don't know what to tell you. I've got <laughs> air to wash, baby. I just went from ice cool to scalding hot, like within seconds. There was no in between. I don't there was, yeah. <laughs> and you too, Don. I mean, seriously, like you were standing up in that little shower. I'm what are we doing? Let's splash we in the water. We didn't have a whole lot of room Ball together. Sack? Yeah. Really? Yeah, when Chris and I were in the shower together, it wasn't was a lot of fun. <laughs> we're big fellas. Uh, that's not yeah. that's a pretty picture I can see. Yes, like, it was. One likes it. Is that the picture that you like to take of everybody? You got that one of you and Chris. In the yeah, we'll take you a copy of it, Mike. And Chris signed it, I'm sure. There was three times that Don kept saying, that's not a pillow. <laughs> right. Those aren't pillows. And Chris, you're two friends. Those guys are gems. Yeah. 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 Brent. What was the other guy's name? I forget his name. Um, um Tom. That's, that's why I was late getting getting back here. I had to get them back on that work release program out of jail. <laughs> yeah. And Brent is a pat is a Mahomes collector. There was there was three Mahomes at the show. And yeah. Somehow he sniffed them out and he bought two of them. Can you imagine how he found those in the sea of, and he, you know, the, the great thing was about Ash too. You know, we were all blowing smoke up his ass, but like, especially Greg, right? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the great, the, the great thing was, is that our group, he really like paid off everybody. You know, like Orlando was looking for, he had a couple of like, uh, gorgeous cards that he had that he was looking for, you know, top dollar on or what. And uh, Ash paid him. You know, he didn't try to well, grind them because he had stuff that, you know, hadn't been sold in forever. And they're, you know, you don't see him. You never see him. He asked a certain amount. Ash paid him off. Uh, Mike Moynihan, he had those two roofs, the ones that were beat to hell. Ash paid him. I didn't say that. I'm just saying they weren't beat to hell. They were two and a half. They were freaking gorgeous. He, they, he, he Ash definitely paid well. If you were selling and you sold to Ash, you did well. Yeah, and Brent also he came up to me and says, Hey, do you know anybody that would want these sheets? You know, around here he had those uncut sheets. And I go, gosh, I don't know. And I don't know about Ash. If he and then we went to Orlando, he didn't know any of the dealers. And so I said, Yeah, you might as well try Ash. Or what he walked down to Ash and he sold them. Got the same amount of money that he had sold him off for R at REA or whatever. He was and very pleased. Yeah. And then Ash sold everybody cards, I think. I mean, me, oh, yeah. I bought a couple cards, and uh, Darren bought a couple from him. I think. Yeah, you're the only two that could afford to buy them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell I you, you his know, his prices are, it's tough to buy them. I mean, he's almost a harder guy to buy from than Don. Nobody drives, he, he'll at least give you a break when he's <laughs> pounding you. Don just, Shakes his head. No, you go, okay. <laughs> yeah. And and he doesn't buy you lunch afterwards or even. Yeah. Even, uh, even at least call, he doesn't call you afterwards. Yeah. No. At least I don't <laughs> buy you lunch. <laughs> well, okay. guys. Have a, Ash, he, he cut me a, for a, like a small card. He cut, when he found out I was with the YouTube guys, he uh he cut me a pretty good break. On a card. It, was, it was a small card. Who cares? Who cares? Like that. It's all that's up. Yeah, it was the hey, that's not that's a Carlton rookie. Yeah, yeah. That's a small car. That's and not a small car. So yeah, you, I think you guys will like this. That? I think you guys will like this. Don, Don and I were. I know how a dealer can a hundred percent sell a card for more than what it's worth. Don and I, on our last day there. We go by Stan's table, and I'm I'm buddies with Stan's, and he has his two kid he has his, he has his two kids there with him, and they they go, hey Uncle Chris, now how can you not? How could you not? And his yeah. wife is great. She's a oh, sweetheart, yeah. Casey. Yes. Yeah, I really liked her. I was told to go talk to her because she'll uh, she's a lot easier to deal with than Stan. And as much great stuff as he had. And he had five of everything, and people would ask, "Hey, you have those orbits? Yeah, I got those over here. Or do you have the greater orbits? Yeah, I got them here. He had everything." Uh, your answer why he gets good deals with Stan. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, but I didn't get any. Oh, I, I, I actually, well, you're not prices, like. 
His prices were so high, I couldn't even start negotiations. Where was Stan's table at? Was he all the way in the back? No, no he, he was, was kind of like the, on the first row. On yeah, the left. left. He was next to Howard's table. Yeah, yeah he was right, right next to Howard. He had a bunch yeah. of binders, right? At yeah, the edge at, the of very end of the, at the very yeah. end, he had a bunch of binders. Yeah, I, yeah I, I couldn't, even at the National, I haven't been able to get a deal through him. But mm -hmm. I'm, hey, guys, I'm, I've enjoyed this. I'm going to hop off. All right, Don. See you, Don. See you, Don. Thanks, you, Don. Thanks, again. Thanks again for the card and the beating. Nice talking to you. You're welcome. <laughs> All the best, man. Love you. Yeah, yeah. So that was the, uh, here's a good story for you. So I was uh, I was shopping there with uh, Dave Red Jacket 99. He and I said, Hey, do you know Howard? I just met him. I met Howard, you know. Okay, now those guys we've all talked before on Net 54, and uh, you know, we shook hands or whatever. And uh, Dave is like fixated on this card there. This it was a Joe Jackson something or other. He's looking at the thing and he's taking a picture of it. He goes, shit, he goes, you're not going to believe this. He goes, that card right there? He goes, about three years ago, he says, I gave that card away. I go, what do you mean you gave it away? For what? He goes, I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, it was a contest or something on Net54. I never saw it. He said, I just gave it away. Howard's got it listed there for 15000 <laughs> 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 they, he goes, I thought it was worth like three or four hundred. <laughs> wow. I had actually heard yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. Early on YouTube, early on YouTube, they said that Dave would Dave would just give away big cards like that, even the YouTubers on different contests or something like that. They you know that big cards would show up to people's houses you know in, in the mail just giving them away. So I don't doubt that at all. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so that was just, uh, it's ironic, you know, that you talk about that. Yeah, I was driving, earlier, I was, I was listening, as I was driving, yeah, I was driving and I was listening to it, and we were talking about the raw cards, the amount of raw cards that were there, the vintage cards that were, I mean, there were like a lot of them. There were. I, I, didn't even... I was looking for the 56s, and I, I could not believe how many stacks of raw 56s I was going <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah, I've got to kind of change my mindset, because some of them are really, really sharp. And I'm thinking, I know. I'm thinking they're overpriced, but then now that I'm thinking about today, they really weren't because, you know, that Ernie Banks rock card would probably grade out pretty good if I wanted to grade it. But do you guys really want to take the chance again? And, I mean, I don't know. I'm just tired of the of getting beat like a redheaded stepchild. Worse than with Don. <laughs> really? I mean, I mean I'd rather just me. buy a card that's already in a slab and get right. beat on that as opposed to have to buy it raw. Send it in, be disappointed, <clears throat> and pay all the money. I, just, I, okay. I, don't, I don't care. Just tired of spend, it. They're not going to spend that much money to grade that many cards. Uh, but it's, you guys have some great stories on it, and you guys have been pretty lucky. You really haven't been beat too bad on it. No, you know, I, know. I just don't care about the grade. So if I like the card and I just want to cap Yeah, but I don't want to pay for it because, you know, like you said, they're not any that much cheaper, or you're not getting it's like you're not really saving anything. Right, you're better off right. buying those threes and fours, those and fives, right. those wheelhouse cards. And I like, I mean, you guys got some just like Greg. I mean, just some unbelievable cards you picked up. Those football cards at the end there, there those were. I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what that sweet man Don, who yeah, uh, exactly. who Orlando was talking to and did a video with, and and Orlando introduced him to me. Uh, getting to speak with him like that, that I mean. That was like, that helped make my day. Like, that was really, really fun. He has a friend, his friend Steve, who lives in Las Vegas. They text all the time. They collect cards long distance together. And and Don helps Steve collect and, and find stuff for him. And just talking talking with him was really, really cool. So that yeah, kind of I, I actually just awesome. introduced myself to him. I saw the guy. I just kind of grabbed I didn't know who he was. He was just happened to be talking to a couple of the dealers, and I it seemed like a movie star to me. So I just said, "Hey, Don!" I just waved. Yeah, I didn't know he was. Hey, I've never seen him before. Or what? But he he seemed like a very nice guy and very approachable. And that's nice having him over your shoulder like that when you're buying football. Yeah, I and mean, and you don't really need it to be honest. Well, with you, with your I, I think we all need it, and that's what I, hey, that that's the hurt. thing I. That's that's the thing I liked about this is like it's literally a hockey ring. So you, you look and you're like, oh man, I'm curious. I want I want to see what Orlando thinks about this. I want to see what Mike thinks or Darren thinks or whoever Chris or whoever. And you're like, well, maybe not Chris, but the other guys you might want to know what they think. And so you you look over and you're just like, oh, they're right there. I'm gonna go grab them, 
And I'm going to come over and go, hey, are you wave them over? It's like, that's the cool part. At the National, I just have a feeling it's going to be like passing ships in the night and the camaraderie of this show. Because like, oh, then we no go, doubt. hey, want to go to lunch? And we're all yeah. right there. Well, that's lunch, why let's, you go, guys, let's go. You guys didn't have the same experience. You, you Similar. I mean, somewhat. But I don't think this was like the National. Like you said, I mean, you could look over. You know, and you or you as you're just walking around, you had somebody there you could, you know, run shit by. Oh, in Chicago, yeah. in Chicago, if you're at the national, there's a chance you might not see anybody until the that's meet what first. I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Same here. And I saw that uh, Smokey Joe Wood, Doug, there uh, just commented, and that guy, what a great guy, and his collection. Oh my gosh, he, what a collection he has of Smokey Joe's and other friends. <laughs> That are very good, believe it or not, unbelievable. And Orlando, the deals he pieced together and the card he oh. ended up with. Oh my! Oh, God. Orlando, I don't know if he's posted. Has he posted his video yet on that card? Know. When you guys see that, yeah, I don't. Card, I, I, yeah, don't give it away. That's gonna be the sickest <laughs> card I ever saw. I, I mean, it was just, it was absurd. Speaking of absurd, hey, there's, Gretzky. there's Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> Brian but or Brian. <laughs> you did you are so great that you didn't fall. You that did the awesome. first time you were on skates with no pads. You're nuts. <laughs> they would have all I, I would have bet against myself from falling. But you have uh, no idea how hard how hard that it was impressive. Hurts. I was I was hyping that up. I said I didn't even know you did that, and that was impressive. Did you I went up to the lady at the counter and I said, hey, I've never skated before. How much does it cost to rent some skates? And she's like, this will basically be so funny that I'm going to give them to you for free. <laughs> <laughs> and don't hold up liable if you hurt yourself. <laughs> right, you, right. Don't, you don't ski much there in Texas, huh? <laughs> no, I, I've skied a lot before in my younger days because I lived in Colorado for a few years, but uh, not in a but long time. Similar. You need to open your, you know, your legs a little more. Get that that same. It's a similar uh, balance. I wanted to really try to go fast, but I didn't want to push my luck, and I really <laughs> did not want to fall. Honestly. Not falling was a win. Not falling was that's a win. Just take that. It, 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 was, it was amazing that you made it one one time around without falling. Crazy. So I got hey guys, gonna be knocking on your door. And, and by you the way, really thanks fun. for that. Yeah, do you like it? Are you happy oh with my it? Gosh, what a card! And then you soldiers, other ones to Ash. We were talking about that. Yeah, I was, that was great. Happy. I was, I was mixed. It's mixed emotions, right? You have two cards that are on your list that you want to make of your cards that you just. But you'll yeah. get you'll. It, it was just better. You just that you needed to you know get that get most you know the more money you get back the faster you get it back. That was the idea. You'll get your PSA one and a half so that'll look like that or they'll look better. You know that's more your style. You know that those SGCs were they you know you don't want that shit. You know. <laughs> I got to tell you all a, I got to tell you all a John story. So. Yeah. I walk up to John. He's trying to make a deal. He, he talked about this on his vlog, but it was like, dude, Mike, I just showed up and John, I make John buy cards, I guess. I don't know. I, I have, I have this weird effect on John to, that he buys cards. Like, I don't know that he would have bought those cards if I wasn't yeah. standing next to him going, yeah, you should buy those. You're egg poking the bear. I am. <laughs> well, he's a neat guy too. Yeah. I'm actually, he, he actually comes right down the, the freeway here right by my house uh, occasionally for business. I said, yeah, you need to stop by. I'll take you to lunch out here on the way to. No, I'm uh, talking about this John here. John oh, which here. John? Oh, John, John, the other, the other John. Yeah. Oh, that John, John Wade yep. box. Yeah. I was thinking the, 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 oh, you know, that John's pretty the nice amount that you threw out Mike was what I was going to be countering. And uh, we were, so we were on the same page and that, that's what I was, that's what I offered him and he accepted it. So. Yeah, that that was those were great deals. And Sammy, you got that K line from from Don. Yeah, the the fifty four. Yeah, I was going over that card with uh, I don't was it you, Jason? Or was it was it me. Here? Yeah, I yeah. It, it went it went from John's hands to my hands to yeah. Steve's hands and Steve vintage on vintage, and then I think because I was showing you my the one I had that's a five, right? And that one was nicer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ended up doing this. Friend. I fell in yeah. love with this. So yeah, that's a good that's yeah, a good card. It was beautiful. So 
And we all got some from Don and uh, Darren bought a Jackie Robinson from them. So my my hey guys, hour I, to sorry, hour and a half. Yeah, sorry I'm for interrupting. You. I, I need to get going. Thanks everyone. Hey John, uh, good to John. Good time. John. Uh, Mike, not uh, no no dis. You just got on and I'm leaving, but I I, I have to get going. No, Great time. Thanks for yeah. having me on. Appreciate good it. Once. We'll talk See soon. You, John. Okay, my ahead. hour to hour and a half window has been surpassed as well. So it's close. I'm, I'm going to try to get my ninth hour of sleep here in a minute. So for the weekend, it's just so, like college. You said it just like college. Hey, I'll, I'll be honest. With you. I'll be totally honest with you. I literally, my, I was talking to my dad on the phone while I was driving on the way, on the way home. And I was like, I don't remember the last time I had more fun in a weekend. Like literally, like I, awesome. I could not have had more fun and I slept for nine, uh, eight, eight hours. So uh, I'm totally cool with the way that it worked out. So all, all of you guys, like I had never met anyone in person. Uh, I, I couldn't have been more pleasantly, happily engaged and entertained by all of you. So mm -hmm. it was it was a pleasure. And I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Good night. Thanks. Good night, See you guys. Good night, Larry. Okay. Good night, Curly. Thanks for coming, Greg. <laughs> Greg. So. Night, John Boy. <laughs> all right, man. See you. And I'll, uh, I just wanted to pop on and tell, ask Chris if he's feeling okay because he's got that blanket wrapped around him. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> be okay. But uh, I got to meet, you know, Jason for the first time, Craig for the first time, Scott for the first time. Oh, wait, I've met Scott a hundred times before. No. <laughs> I wore my shirt yesterday. My uh, Lou Gehrig says you're still wearing it. No, this is uh, Jackie. Oh, Brooklyn Jackie shirt. says. Oh. Um, we have Brooklyn says, but uh, I just I had a great time, and I just wanted to tell everybody that I enjoyed oh, Mike. Cool er, yeah, Mike you too. Teddy. Nice meeting you. And <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thanks again for the card, the deals. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure, man. It was fun. Yeah, I had a great weekend. And, uh, it, you know, more people should come next year. It what, Craig, what Greg said is you could look up and you'd know somebody. Like it was, it, there was no escaping. I, I would look up and I'd be like, oh, where is everyone? And I could find Sammy Thunder. I could find Don. I could never find Chris because he's short. So I couldn't find him. <laughs> He was there, was, there, well, there were several times when I was looking through cards and you're so focused, I would look to the to next to me and it was someone in our group. <laughs> Sammy was buying Sammy was buying his bazooka and I was looking at cards and didn't know until I heard his voice. And then I, I just want to mention oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sammy. I just want to mention that. I was talking with uh, John Wade Boggs fan and uh, we're coming up I came up with an idea to do like a card show bingo card. And one of those one of the squares is going to be find Dylan at the uh, at the national. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, the other one is to find uh, is to is like uh, a, a a big pelican case being put on a on a display case uh, without, without approval. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so my yeah, that, that bazooka maze that you came up with, I don't know how you found that in that awesome. case over there and that because that he was so, all the way over the corner and right. So you guys, I mean. Toes. I mentioned what I was looking for. And so if like literally I did a I knew that the stuff I was looking for would be in a display case, it wouldn't be hiding somewhere. So I went around for the first 25 minutes, literally sp like speed walking through, looking, 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 looking. As soon as I had 25 minutes to wrap, I'm like pivoting time. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that William Chap Chapel had that bazooka and I've had my eye on it for a little bit at the Philly show when I saw it. And I had a, I got a good deal from him on the New York Journal American May. So I figured that all right, well, you know, he was the guy you bought that from. Huh? Yeah, I bought that from him. And so yeah, I other knew. bazookas I was gonna be looking at too, because I don't have any and I think I wanted I wanted especially after I saw that. But that was the gem of all the uh, bazookas that he had. Yeah, I mean the other thing is and this kind of speaks onto what you guys were talking about earlier is like buying like when it comes to big cards, buying graded versus raw. And there's nothing wrong with buying raw, but in that sort of scenario with the bazooka, I mean, you never know how it's going to grade because of the the can't way it's cut. But yeah, you can't I, pay for a, for a seven when it might be authentic. Right. Well, so because, I mean, yeah, and, and between I mean, but regardless of that, between the two, when I looked at the raw versus the one that I picked up, I mean, the raw one didn't have the same appeal as the one as the graded one, and so I just felt like you know the the margin between the two really wasn't that. Why? Was it SGC or PSA? Uh, here I have it right here. It's SG, SGC oh, four. Look, look at that, and you know what I like about it is it actually fits in the case. 
Yeah, I know, you don't, yeah I know you don't like the oversized I don't stuff, like the really... notebook, and I don't like the <laughs> PSA when it's rattling around or it's in a, you know, it's got to be, these cards have to be presented right to pay that kind of money, in my opinion. Otherwise, I've just been passing them up lately. Like so, if they're, you know, yeah. $5,000 and the card's in there swimming, I'm not buying it. So, Mike, before you get off here, I'm going to get yeah. off, too. But, okay. Uh, this is the real Mike, but uh, but I will always call you Mike Petty for now on. No. Yeah, yeah, me, too. I'll always call yeah. you Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, so, Mike Moynihan. Um, so, I, we, we were talking earlier, just real quick. Uh, this is such a fun event. But you're kind of one – you're you say you're not one of the OGs, but compared to – uh, me and a, a few of us on here, you've been doing this a long, long time. This YouTube group has a lot of power. We that that un- does that's unleashed. Uh, that's not mm-hmm. unleashed fully yet, but uh, just could you imagine this with the YouTubers that went to the show plus the people that went because of the YouTubers kind of promoting this thing? I bet. I bet. Five hundred extra thousand dollars was spent by new YouTubers at this thing, yeah. and then also the the power. We were talking on the way home. Brent is not a YouTuber, and Tom's not a YouTuber. But if we would have said, "Guys, there, this Minnesota show this weekend is awesome. We ought to go to it and meet up." Everybody would converge on Minnesota, and that show would be better. And have, would you ever think, would you ever thought from when you started doing this and started getting other people to do stuff that it would be that that 50 people or 60 people would come together and spend so much money at a show? No, but I dreamed about it. And Well, let's just say, let's just hit the uh, mark there with Orlando just commented. I did see that, that none of us would probably be here right now if it wasn't for Mike. So, I mean, I like to blow a lot of smoke up your ass and everything and, you know, Susie <laughs> Sunshine and all, but it is true. I mean, so you do do, uh, it is what it is. You do deserve a lot of the credit, uh, most wow. of the credit for starting it and taking all the shit for everybody. And uh, yeah. So anyway, hats I just off like to you. and I like my friends and except, especially my best friend, Scott, but everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> my handsome friend, Scott. It's, uh, you know, I saw the power of it last year at the national when Chris, what we have 300 people in the room. And I think this year the get together at the national is going to be four to 500 people. It'll be massive and not just guys doing content. It's going to be a lot of guys that just, we had a lot of guys. Yeah. So I shouldn't say a lot. We had, a, we had several guys that were at the thing this weekend that just watch us and heard about it and wanted to be there and wanted to hang out with us, which I, you that guys don't me. want to do. Why do you me. want to hang out with us? But that was me um, last year at the national. I was one of those guys last year. You were one of those guys. There you go, yeah. Jason. So I never it, wanted to hang out with any of you. <laughs> that's what that's usually true. <laughs> but now right? I, I, you know, the funny thing is, is we all have the same passion. We have the same love for the, uh, you know, the cardboard and then we're, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie to that, and there's just a lot of great things that go along with it. You know, you can never have too many friends, and you know, yeah. we all have our own group, different group of friends as well. But nobody can really understand, for the most part, the you know, what drives us to do this. That is and, correct. Other than us, um, so. I hate to leave at this moment, but I have to head out. So, but Sammy, the best, man. Man. good to see you guys. Uh, we'll see you in a few months. I gotta go too, but uh, yeah, see you, Sammy. Sure. See you later. See you, Sammy.